Midas is the strongest available. He's not sure if he's blind picking it or if he'll be playing a farm war with Gallia. I just hope that KT do something fancy, you know? We go for a top lane Lee Sin with a Gragas jungle. I mean, KT were kind of forced to be safe because Gallio Karma is the double flex in the first round coming yeah. through from Afrika. So they're just looking for any sort of information. All they know is that an AD carry will be selected. When they chose Varus in the first round, I thought they might ban Ash, but they've left that open, giving uh, a lot of credit to the Gallio going mid lane. Yeah, and in fact, Kramer's most played for this season. A lot of players most played just because Ash so incredibly coveted at the moment. However, still a lot of comfort to the Freak Freaks AD carry who does so much love his KDAs. There's the Jarvan locked in for Mara, and he's flexing with the meta, Papa Smithy. And when the Jarvan first came into the picture, people were saying it was especially strong against the Gragas. So it is Marin <laughs> jumping on, <laughs> on something powerful. And yeah, you say Insta-lock on the Corky for Pawn. Well, it has been an incredible pick for him in the past. He has done things on Corky that honestly shouldn't have actually worked, but they do. This was, of course, back in his EDG days. You Almost. wonder if he'll be going for the Trinity Force second, because uh, Trinity Force, uh, Trinity Force, sorry, into Infinity Edge second is the big question mark here. Most more people have been jumping onto the IE over other options in the past. Also, Zeal items are cheaper. Previously, when we had seen Corky in the second part of Spring, it was purely as a counter pick to the LeBlanc. In this case, Galio gives anyone a farm lane, and they are just going to straight up take Corky to return to, as you say, comfort for Pawn, and also a comp that KT ran quite a bit in Spring. Yeah, and also can build a bunch of that AD as well, so not worrying too much about the massive want to build as much magic resist as possible that the old Galio does have. However, Pawn's always been one of these Corky players that loves the Hextech Gunblade. Personally, why I uh, love him a lot. He's not going to build it today, Atlas. How do you know, Papa Smithy? He's because done crazy things. He's going to go towards the Infinity Edge, is my humble prediction. That could be Blade of the Ruin King also, but the armor stacking is going to be real from the Frozen Heart Spirit Visage building. I'll take Koro. that bet. I believe in Pawn to have an interesting build this game. Hey, you can have what you believe, Atlas. <laughs> Everyone gets their own beliefs. That is very true. I'm excited to see what is actually going to shake out, whether KT can have some revenge on their first loss, or whether Afrika Freaks have tightened up their gameplay. Let's check it out as we hit the rift. KT fans out in force. We get onto the rift for game number one. Freaky Freak's going to be on our blue side to start things off. I just noticed that the home guard speed uh, animation for Gallio was just him kind of flexing and looking intimidating. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like it. Fans on the side of Afrika showing their representation. But as you can see, the KT fans. They got the real solid memes. All the vintage <laughs> memes are on the side of KT Rolster. Be they good or bad, Papa Smithy. But I just, I love the Alpaca one. That's my personal favorite. It's a top meme. Oh, 10 out of 10. In fact, most of the Oceanic casting team owning Alpacas ourselves. I bought one while I was out there. I remember yeah. Atlas. Yeah, yeah. You were part of that. I know, was. You know, I'm, I'm aware that you're an Australian, Papa Smithy. I gave my alpaca to Roscurin when oh, I left. Really? It was kind of like a passing of the torch because she came on at the Australian office as I was leaving to Korea. And I thought, okay, well, you still have Deft. Gave I away the alpaca I named Deft. I never got it back when he came back to Korea, though. Oh, no. I sh you should have uh, let me know. Could have picked it up. It's true. Misplay. Yeah, unfortunate. Pretty hard leash here for score. He got both a barrel roll and a, a phosphorus bomb. bomb. Yeah. Now, laning phase for Deft and Marta was actually pretty conspicuous last time out, and they're trading heavily at level one. Yeah, Deft immediately blowing that potion. Good dodge of the Q as Tucson's going to run his way back. Marta largely ignored as he got that sweet double play. But already, so many blows traded. But remember, we are in that Doran fateful shield. Doran shield meta, so everyone has two potions and hell. Kuro's even got some biscuits ready to go I like with it. the Doran shields. We're at four today. I was watching NALCS games this morning, and Ooh. there was only two Doran Shields in some of the yeah, games. Yeah, I was watching it. I was like, hmm, 
What is going wrong this game? I, th there's something going wrong. And, uh... Look, it wasn't going wrong as much for Phoenix 1. However, it's probably because they had a couple more Doran shields. They went on to lose the next two games, so that, that narrative point actually runs away. But <laughs> I agree. That's because Immortals learnt to build Doran shields, Papa Smithy. Thanks, God. It's called being adaptive. Even Sven built one, just so you know. <laughs> the man who proudly said he would not build one built one on Kog'Maw. Score started with the strong leash. That's why he's so quickly bot lane, but Freaka already had a ward down in the lane brush. They're also going very, very aggressive. Score is going to utilize this time on the bottom side of the map to steal away Krog Camp. Because he went Raptors red into blue into bot lane gank probably about 10 seconds earlier than you'd respect. So solid from Afrika that they had the scouting. When they saw the Phosphorus Bomb come from the mid lane, they could have guessed that it was a double leash onto the Raptors, and that's why the speed was respected as Score and Spirit meet. Yeah. Oh, actually, the flash going to be used from Score Use W Repel. to clear. Yeah, the flash immediately answers, though, from Spirit. Dragon gets upset, and Score will go down for first blood. It's Tucson that picks that one up. Pawn getting aggressive onto Kuro in the mid lane, but now no possible jungle support. And that is a disaster already for KT. Yeah, Score didn't respect the fact that Spirit could actually be in his bottom jungle. He actually used his W, Safeguard, to help with speed of clearing, get passive procs on clearing the Krugs, and then didn't have it up. That's why he had to open with the Flash. It was slow to make his escape. Spirit was already level four at the time. So superior pathing from Spirit does actually take down Score. Yeah. The Ward also was the true MVP there as they had that extra information. And that was the only camp available. So when Spirit went in, he knew exactly where Score was going to be. Yeah, even fake pinging as well onto his uh, Raptor camp. Checks that, makes sure that they're not there yet. Of course they're not. It's down to those Krugs, it's all too easy. And that's going to be a big confidence boost to Spirit, who, like we say, was not looking strong in a series victory yeah. against Ever8 earlier this week. I mean, it sounds harsh to say in spite of, but at points when he was just dying unnecessarily, it did feel like the win came largely not at the expertise of Spirit. No, not from what we were expecting. Felt more like Spirit back in the WE days. Things weren't necessarily going oh so right. Come on, gonna head back home. See what he's going to pick up. Dark Seal and Corrupting Potion for Kuro. Yes. Oh, good hook lands onto Tucson, but he's not taking too much damage. Remember, double buffs on the Karma. Good Dark Passage is gonna get death to safety. A double buff does mean that he has the health regen from red buff as well. So, it's the auto attacks for trading, but when he backs away, still has more defensive capabilities as well. Feels like it's one of those things about red buff you forget because it was added much later in the picture. Yeah. Smurf actually going very aggressive onto Marin. Grasp the Undying will at least keep Marin relatively healthy. Spirit is going to be here to help him out. There is a ward. Drops over a control as so they know he's there. Marin doesn't get the knock up. Smurf will have the body slam to get out of the way of this cocoon, but still snags it on the way through. A lot of damage coming out. Smurf's probably happy to go back. He had very low mana, so he hasn't bought Triple Doran's Ring yet. So when it comes to gank timings, one of the ones you'd accept as Smeb because yeah. you're not really losing much. The minion wave has been really well controlled by Maron. You can tell by the CS values. Being 15 CFs and 10 CS up when he left the lane, which obviously is a bit more relevant, is still pretty impressive for the Jarvan, given the wave is so much more reliable from Smeb. Yeah, it certainly is. Comes back, like you said, Triple Doran's Ring. Quoth armor now gathered for Smeb, so... Oh, Marin started with the disrespect, he's got a call. Oh god, <laughs> there we go. You know, if you're Smeb, you are definitely tilted when you see Carl. <laughs> yep. I know Smeb, personally. He is right now going to be tilted. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marin also feeling a little bit tilted, based on the trajectory of that flag and drag. Gragas can potentially have kill pressure in this lane. Marin's not going to be building any defensive items early. It's going to be very much about the Tiamat into the Black Cleaver. So when you see Cull, which is usually symbolic of a safe laning phase, you tend to say, okay, well, I'll show you. Yeah. Which is why Spirit's controlling the top side. So it's almost vertical jungling at this point. Uh, Spirit wants to make the return gank. Having said, lots of pings going down the bottom side jungle of Freaka. Spirit looking at the red buff, but it only just spawns now. In they go. KT really looking to try and take a hold of this one as Spirit 
just going to path around. Horn doesn't want to actually Valkyrie over because A, he's low mana, and B, his team was three man invading, so he's trying to buy time. Oh, oh no! Party the cask. barrel misses! As does the cast. The flash has to be used to get out of the way of that knockup. Smeb getting a bunch of his health back, but this is a bit of a comedy of errors thus far. Flash still available for Marin. With that uh, Q getting a bunch more points into it. Oh, Cocoon lands. Spirit's looking to grab another kill. All too easy. Gets his way out. And this is the spirit that we were looking for in the Ever 8 series. And for Smeb, the top lane sense kind of left, let him down in that scenario. He was changing up his skill order, actually maxing E, the body slam, looking for trades and actually killing Jarvan in a long lane. Instead, his turret is going to go down super, super early. And in a matchup that, sure, Jarvan does win out on trades early, not usually at the behest of giving up turret, but when you max the E and then just make a mistake when you know you don't have any support on the top side, given that your whole team was bot side and you saw Elise earlier, it's just a pretty big mistake from a top laner that we hold as one of the top three in the world. Yeah. But incredible play from Marin. Now 20 CS in the lead. Certainly set up to take over this game. We've seen some Jarvans do some pretty mean things so far on this particular patch. And as the game goes forward, you look at the comps and KT with the double AD and then also Thresh and Gragas are very much about Siege. That is very much the... Whenever you see double AD, you can pretty much plug and play that it's going to be a Siege comp. But Gragas ult here is largely going to be for Disengage. The box largely going to be for Disengage. Marta will stay very far out when the, the double ADs are hitting turrets and then just try to land in Varus when he gets inevitably cataclysm by the Jarvan. Yeah. Well, there is a lot of strong engage on the side of Afrika, and especially if Marin, like this, is allowed to get damage early. It's not going to be about the CC effect of the Flag and Dragon to all. That can be potentially three quarters of the health of Avaris. So the Jarvan getting ahead certainly does ruin or at least stall some of the core strategies that KT have drafted. Oh, good Valkyrie. Rumpong gets him out of the way. He does have that sheen built up. So you're exactly right, Papa Smithy. He's not going for the gun blade. See whether it goes for its second item. Are you ready for the newest evolution of the Gallio? The flag and drag into Cataclysm as Gallio oh. launches himself on top of the AoE. Cataclysmic entrance? Is that what we're going to call it? We could call it that. It doesn't sound that bad. Can you say it with gusto? Uh, yeah, well, we'll just wait for a team fight. Wait for a Cataclysmic entrance to actually occur on we the map. We will definitely see a Cataclysmic entrance this game. See how effective it's going to be. Might be more aptly named than we'd otherwise expect. Good body slam. There's the cask actually landing this time. Marin's flash is going to have to be burnt. Score doesn't make his way around. Does have that flash available to try and get that kick happening. So just to follow the theory of the E into W max we're seeing from Gragas, this is respecting that Jarvan wins all in trades so heavily and can interrupt the body slam. Can also, the other interaction we saw that was really cool is that the Jarvan ultimate does override the Gragas ultimate. So you do actually not get displaced because you're immune to crowd control during the animation. So this is a fighter build where he's accepting that he's going to have to get into regular trades with the Jarvan and can't afford to just push it. Whoa, Marta going to use that flash towards the bottom side. At least Smeb now knows that he doesn't have another spider lady to deal with up towards the top side of the map. Yeah, with the first two successful ganks coming through from the Elise and also the Jarvan having position and lane control on the Gragas, KT don't have the latitude to be pushing up and getting down even River Vision. It feels like they have to be super defensive because there's a lot of initiation tools. The Cataclysmic Entrance, like you mentioned, the Ash yeah. Arrow is available. They're being zoned away from a minion wave just in the middle of the lane because there's just so much to respect on the map and the map is also largely in darkness from a KT perspective. Yeah, 2,600 gold behind currently for KT. We'll see whether some of these mid-game item spikes can help them out. Corky, of course, always known for that. Score now having the kick can certainly make something happen, and Gragas has been a mid-game champion almost forever. But are they falling too far behind? Is Marin too far ahead, and is Spirit controlling the flow of this game far too effectively? Yet to find out. All about item timings, I think. That's the big thing to take away. We still are waiting for Trinity Force and Blade the Ruin King to come out of Pawn and Death, respectively. 
but if they can't find a couple of picks and get the map control necessary to actually get safe sieging down, then the answer to your question very much could be yes. If Gragas can't actually enter lane and wave clear next to Jarvan, and thus his teleport becomes largely irrelevant, once again, the answer could be yes, Atlas. If the double teleport continues to get ahead and if Smeb gives up a couple more kills, it does feel like even plan A for KT may not be a viable one. Well, at least Pawn's avoiding ganks this time around. Looking pretty uh, cool, calm, and collected there in the mid lane on the Corky, but... It does feel a bit like a Band-Aid solution if you get ganked too much to be on uh, cleanse Corky mid. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever you can do to try and get your... Um, Get your mojo back there in the mid lane, I think, is important. Oh, playing yourself into form, like you say, early in the season is not a bad thing. He did look most at home on the Corky during that big winning streak for KT at the start of spring. Yeah. Always did over in China as well. It was always weird watching Pawn pick Corky where Deft existed on the team, being one of the best Corky players of all time. Got to know your role, Atlas, and Corky's yep. a mid lane champion these days. Yeah, certainly is. But not when we were watching Chaos back in the day. Not, not when we were watching Deft, you and I casting him in spring of 2015. Oh, absolutely. The meta changes, and you have to adapt. I remember when Varus was a mid lane champion. Oh, so do I. I still think he's a mid lane champion. Just put my Varus room page together, Pop Smithy. What does it look like, Atlas? <laughs> it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, At least you're a, honest. It's got a very awkward amount of cooldown reduction because I only feel comfortable building 20%. So I'm like, oh, we'll just get to 35 and it'll be K, right? Because I'm never going to get a blue buff. Like, that's just not a thing. Spirit will, though. He's looking to steal away KTs. Hashtag segue. And what I think people should realize is kind of like you say about Windows, where arrow hits. Yeah, there's the flash. Spirit just chaining the CC. It's all too easy. Def not even going to flash. He knew that those auto attacks were in the air and he was going to die. Yeah, it just follows my point, though. Windows of being able to push, windows of power, windows of getting your wing conditions together. You can see that just meeting a minion wave halfway down the bot lane right now is an overextension for the texture of this game. After top lane had basically no pressure, Jarvan was off the map during the start of that initiation and able to teleport in at any point. Bot lane has to respect double teleport and globals from the side of a freak of freaks and that's why Deft and Marta are hanging back. They may not be losing in CS by a lot, but they find it very hard to pressure the map and it's gonna take a pick like that from KT to even put down the sort of vision to start the process. Everything in League of Legends is a multi-step process and right now it feels like KT are being denied step one. Yeah, completely. And I really like that you bring that up because I feel like when they do get that window, things could be possible, right? But it's like a freaker are holding on to the throats of KT, not letting them get anything done on this map whatsoever. Smeb desperately looking for something as he wanders around. The Rift Herald not being looked at so far this game. KT not having a great time with the Rift Herald in their Longju series. That one was uh, conspicuously bad, but Pong getting caught on Fizz was the thing that basically forced the Rift Herald to be completely anonymous. Rift Herald for either team here would be massive. KT obviously would love it because with the team they have, you know, if you get a Trinity Force complete um. on Pawn, Group is five. As, as you can see, the leash range of the Rift Herald is quite large. <laughs> What's I'm he pretty doing? sure he's supposed to go back at some point. No, he's just hanging out. This uh, is fine. This is fine. Is it? This is fine. Are we sure? This is fine. Don't worry. It's just, uh... I'm seeing the image of the dog on fire saying this is fine. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it was official. Can we go back? I want to go back and see. I actually really it? need to know as well. Yeah. Come on, guys. We know. We're just, we've just got farming going on right now. Kuro, did you went, go and spot out the Rift Herald? Is he still hanging out at the Rift Buff? He's trying to talk his I'm going to assume that he's still there. I'm going to assume that he went back. See, you, this is why you're a party pooper, Papa Smithy. You know, sometimes. Party pooper, Papa Smithy. That is a difficult. Triple P, baby. That's a lot of alliterating. I really didn't need to do just there. I'm illiterate enough. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> We've gone off the rails. <laughs> just like the Rift Herald. I thought that one was absolutely <laughs> fine given the context of the Rift Herald. Trinity Force now completed though for Pawn. The response is going to be an Abyssal Scepter, which I'm happy to see from Crow. That's actually much more offensive than his build. It went Spirit Visage last time out. 
So a lot of magic damage to respect from Pawn, even though he is going to be going the AD route. Yeah. Even if you go AD though as a Corky, you're still going to be doing a heck of a lot of magic damage, just given his passive and phosphorus bomb and rockets and all those things that do magic damage. Holkashian's already come through from Maron, who's significantly ahead. Is Cloud is still there? He is. That's all. Oh, see what I was saying? Perfect. He do, man. <laughs> he just wants to take Repo. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this one's on the bug list, Alice. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the best. This is called We don't know the if it's game, official bug. This is called the game wanting KT to be the kings of summer. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, come on. We'll put it over near you guys. It'll be fine. I promise. <laughs> oh. I really don't know if this, this is, is But we don't even know if it's really there or it's a visual hey, bug. That's We've had true. crazy visual bugs before. I want to think that Summoner's Rift is KT biased. <laughs> that's what I want to think. Oh, utterly fantastic. <laughs> 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 oh, what a time to be alive. 3,000 gold is the lead, despite the positioning of the Rift Herald for Afrika. Oh, maybe it's a handicap based on lead gained by the opposition side. It just moves the Rift Herald closer and closer you know, to the other team's base. You know, I didn't see that in the patch space. notes, Atlas. I didn't either, but um, look, the patch notes were oh, it's gone. pretty thorough. It's gone. Oh, no. Is he completely gone? I don't know. It's almost about time to go home. <laughs> okay, well, Rift Herald just going to be ignored this game by the looks of things. 18 minutes and 50 seconds means that he'll be going relatively soon. And I hope we don't look at him in the pit, because I want to assume that he wandered closer to the red buff that he really wanted to steal. I like to feel like Rift Herald no! decided that for once he was not going to have any more. He'd been overlooked enough times for his promotion. Yep. He just went to find people. He's like, where are you guys at? You never you never come see me anymore. See, he's still like as close to the red pit as he can possibly <laughs> get. It's like the Brambleback is his long lost lover or something like that. Oh, Harold. You adorable bug man. Harold will be taken. I'm sorry, I, I actually just assumed the gender of the Rift Herald. You did. We call him Harold so often, and I haven't met a lady called Harold. So you need to get where, out more. That is where the assumption came from, and I'm sorry, because purely based on my own personal experience. Now, I'm going to completely disregard your personal experience for a color point here. Sorry, oh, that's Atlas. probably a good idea. This is the first time we've seen a top laner pick up Rift Herald. You'll notice oh, yeah. that Jarvan has it. Previously, it's been junglers, and I wondered out loud, if you can force something on the side of the map, force Smeb to teleport, and then to stick down a Rift Herald as a top laner, you can actually just set up a scenario where maybe the two turrets is possible with Rift Herald. Do we feel like maybe the time limit on the Rift Herald buff means that KT can just play safely for four minutes and try and make sure that no nothing like that happens? Like, that could be a reason why jungle Can you play take safely it? from Ash Arrow and Heroic Entrance? It feels like they have enough tools from Afrika that... Three kills on the side of Afrika says no. It does feel like they have those extra tools, the long-range initiations that makes purely staying under turret even not enough safety. But like you say, we're looking at around... 23 minutes for the Rift Herald to time out. So very interesting to see what Marin makes of it. Could just come and try and dunk mid and then put it mid. That would be the very standard choice. I'm looking for a rotational Rift Herald. Yeah. Here's the Justice Punch. Is the package going to be used? Fawn gets the hell out of there. And Marin's decided that it's all on his shoulders today. I'm going to have the blue buff. I'm going to have the Rift Herald. I like it. Def going to miss the Chains of Corruption. Because I believe it's a Dragon that Afrika are looking for. Some giggles from the audience. I think everyone's having a bit of fun, given Rift Herald's <laughs> long leash this game. <laughs> it was a very long leash. Well, Smeb is going to discover Marin. He wants to stop him from getting out of here, by the looks of things. To lock down the location of that uh, Rift Herald. At two armor items versus Marin, who has no lifesteal apart from the on-hit from the Cull. He is starting to win trades, which is how Smab is built. Yeah, definitely positive. Looks like this tower will fall down pretty easily here for the Afrika Freaks. KT wanting nothing to do with it, especially without Deft having his ultimate. And with the possibility of a gigantic Jarvan to make his way towards the bottom side of the map. Continue to seed objectives and start to miss those timing windows we always allude to when we see a Corky in the mid lane. Yeah. Itemization doesn't really get any better for KT than the spot they're at right now. Feels like this is where they're relatively the strongest. So it's going to be on the likes of Score and Mata to make some vision trips. Actually try to set up somewhere where they're strong. 
preferably around the mid lane so they can start trying to take down turrets. But the moment they do that, draw four people, Marin still has a chance to put down the Rift Herald. He's just gonna use it in base, I guess. This is like Rift Herald's wild ride today. It's going down bot lane. This is, Rift Herald is seeing new parts of the map. He, he seriously is. He uh, or she, the yes, Rift Herald. We'll call the, it the Rift Herald. They, they. They're seeing new parts of the map. They're going bot lane. Yeah, there we go. And all of it, look at this. Marin said, here in the little Rift Herald, <laughs> come check out this bottom lane. <laughs> that's, not that's not Marin's accent, <laughs> even a little bit. Well, that, no, but when he's talking to an adorable Rift Herald, that's you, know, true. you know how you put on the baby voice, Papa Smithy? I've had a puppy before. I yeah, know how it see? goes. That's how it works. Well, it's going to be a Freak of Freaks going on the opposite but side of the map. This is good from a Freak. It's a 4-1 that I was looking for with the Rift Herald. Now, using it early, so giving extra information from KT, but you can see KT. They have pawn in the mid lanes. There's a lot of things to juggle here from the side of KT. Decent wave clear coming out though on the side of KT means that Afrika at least thwarted on the top side of the map. Smeb looking to try and take down this Rift Herald and the tower only at about half. Barrel comes in. That is going to be the Rift Herald taken down. Oh, no longer the adventures of Rift Herald. Every time I see KT Rift Herald, style. because we're still learning about it, I feel like I'm doing like judging like rhythmic gymnastics or something. I need to hold <laughs> up a score. <laughs> that, yep, was a, that was a three and a half out of 10. Yeah, that was. Didn't even get a single turret, which should be the absolute minimum. If they just rocked up five people in mid lane and put down the Rift Herald, they would have got one turret, so... Depends on what the criteria is, though, for you judging the Rift Herald. Because the as far as distance traveled, this Rift Herald is easily the most successful. I'm outcomes-based. How many <laughs> turrets, baby? The answer was zero. Yeah, well, already a Freaker had done a pretty good job taking down some turrets, top and bottom lane. Might have been that mid lane could have been a good option, even with a five-man push. Make it six with uh, Harold or Haroldette. Haroldette? Would that work as a lady's Harold name? Why don't we go with Harold? <laughs> Just change the vowel, Atlas. Oh, I like it. <laughs> well, they're feeling pretty confident here in the mid lane. Hasn't wandered that far out behind a turret in quite some time, but survives. Pawn's actually decided to go for the second item, Phantom Dancer. Just wants to enter the side lanes and not be instantly burst by someone. With the damage reduction and just being cocky with Flash Cleanse, he will be able to get out of many different engagements. KT seem to have normalized quite a lot, though. Keeping that gold lead under 4,000 for Afrika. But the map still well and truly in their hands. A lot of defensive vision for KT, but they haven't been able to move past the river almost all game long. It's been Afrika with a stranglehold on the vision game. They haven't really surrendered too many worthwhile objectives. The Drake RNG has worked in the advantage of KT. They never got even close to contesting a Drake. So giving up no Infernals or Mountains is happy times for them. Yeah. They haven't lost even all three turrets yet because Marin was a little bit too creative with his use of the Rift Heralds. They haven't actually broken the mid lane turret either. So for now, it's kind of acceptable losses given the early game for KT Rolster could certainly be much further behind if Afrika had been specifically more on point with that Rift Herald. Yeah, I'm just trying to drag this one out. Tucson unable to take down that pink ward. A little bit unfortunate. Score just going to get a slow for his trouble, but knows exactly where that Karma is. And Marin's taken all the buffs this game. Oh, no. Graham is going to come around and try and steal it. Oh, oh. Hard to say. That looked, <laughs> yeah, that looked like a solo queue situation, you know? It's like, oh, well, we'll just both hit it and see what happens. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I mean, Marin has built for the split push, so him picking out red would probably not have been the worst scenario. Oh, definitely not. KT don't have... Arrow. The most initiation. Aha, uh -huh, the walk right. That's how you do it. Or the walk left. Doesn't matter which one you do, you're going to avoid a skill shot. I'm going to write that down. That's going to help me not get hit by every si everything. Doing VOD reviews of your own game in Solo does actually help a lot when it comes to noticing your tendencies. Oh, I, I find it just makes me sad. That, I, it depends if you're playing to win or not. <laughs> if you're looking to gain that LP, it's usually a good idea. Well, Dev definitely showed that you can walk to the side and avoid a skill shot. Now Freaky Freaks are going to show us that they can take down the last remaining out of turret, and they do so in the mid lane, opening up the map even further for the blue side squad. Been a pretty slow claim on the three outer turrets, but like you say, is now registered. KT, with the kind of relative quiet of the past, what, 15 to 17 minutes, yeah. have actually been able to get some defensive vision in their red side jungle. 
So at least they do have one quad quadrant of the map that they will get early warning if a rotation comes through from Afrika. Felt like they had precious few places they could go. They were being dictated to by Afrika in the early game, but because Afrika took the foot off the accelerator a little bit, it does feel like the game is a bit more even. Yeah, slowly but surely getting their waves in order though on the side of Afrika. That bottom one is going to be pushing forward. Marin goes back. He's got a fair bit of gold to spend. Got 1,500 gold, which is the Kul cash in. Assists and about 13 CS. And of course the global gold from the turrets. Yep. Three turrets doing work. Also got local gold from first brick. Which is pretty good. Freak of Freaks now posturing for an aggressive position around this dragon. KT actually looking like they want to fight. It's good mom It's good uh, formation from KT. KT going in hard. Yeah, they're actually just looking to lock down Kuro. This is a dangerous one. Four man. Four man taunt from Kuro. Mata stays alive for a long time. The box comes in. He's still not dead. Marin looking for it. Finds the kill, but has he overextended? They've already got two kills. A freak of freaks. Still looking good, but that was massive from Koro and questionable from KT to go straight for the Galio. And that's the thing, Smeb needed to pull the trigger, pulled the trigger on the Galio and kind of granted a four-man initiation. It's two for zero, but it could have been much worse. The attempt at the Jarvan and Galio engage was largely botched in the end. The Cataclysm used for no reward right at the end, but they already got the two kills that opened up a free objective. Kramer's is going to look for at least a little bit of damage onto an inner turret as well. Well, this was the turret that the Rift Herald was able to get a fair bit of work done on. So that is going to fall relatively easily. A freak, freak, grab a dragon and a turret and a couple of extra kills and extend that gold lead to just over 6,000. So Smep decides to initiate because Marin is on the, the inner turret down bot lane. He thinks he has a window, but the wards have been prepped earlier and it's just a beautiful flash four-man taunt from the Galio. But if you notice, EQ kills Thresh, but it seems like there's a big disconnect between Marin and Kuro by that initiation. So it definitely could have been even more consequential from the side of Afrika. AT thought something existed that clearly did not. And now with all their flashes down, the next cataclysmic entrance as you crowned it, <laughs> Atlas, will be devastating because only the Thresh Lantern and also some of the innate mobility here well, say four people, Varus, he's got none of that. He most certainly doesn't. He does have his uh, last whisper item, though. Lord Dominic's regard has been completed, so Def wants to be able to cut through Marin and Kuro as much as he possibly can. Marin, not with a whole lot of armor just yet, but Kuro certainly is a bit of a beast in that department. Dead Man's Plate as well as the Frozen Heart already done. Definitely only be paper cuts to the Galio oh, yes. when it comes to the... Picking up the very early Lord Dominic's regard. But it's what you can do on a budget. Still the right call, given that the front line here from Afrika is very tanky. Yep. 30 minutes into the game as well, even just passive armor being built up. Working out pretty well for death. It's the mortal reminder decision by Kramer, though. Both of them with very, very similar builds. Scenarios like this where we see Pawn pushing without a lot of vision that do remind you of some of the wayward days of KT towards the end of the spring season. Yeah. It seemed like when they didn't know how to push their advantage with a no-tank comp, which admittedly is not today, but again, reminding us, well, hold that thought. Ah, uh, Def. Nope. He's just going to get exploded. It's a good arrow from Kramer. You mentioned that he's been Prey-esque of late on this particular pick. Still demonstrating exactly that form. They will take an inner turret in the mid lane as well, ticking that up to 5-0 to zero in favor of Afrika. And speaking of zeros, the perfect game is still on, Atlas, amazingly. Yeah. It's been a perfect first 31 minutes from the side of Afrika Freaks. Not something we say about that team very often. Especially not against KT as well. Spring record was 2-1 victories for KT back-to-back. -back. Still can grab one of those score lines here for KT, but it will require back-to-back -back victories after this, and it's not looking like they're going to be let back into this game without a pretty phenomenal showing for the rest of it. Had the red side zone completely lit up, did the Afrika Freaks. Marin's the only one here right now. The score is going to find him. Let's see whether he does go for the kickback. They get a teleport out. The score says, well, that'll do. It's going to get cancelled by Kuro. QSS actually built... By Spirit, that's an interesting one. I guess just wanting to negate the chain of corruption if he's the first person in the initiation and still be able to land the cocoon, but a bit suspicious on that one. 
bit suspicious is the Warmox purchase as well. Of course, now only requiring, what is it, 2750 to activate the super regen when out of combat. So from Darshan in the NALCS day. Something a lot of value from it, but we'll hold that thought. Yeah, Arrow gonna get soaked by Smurb. He's happy to grab that one. Justice Punch doesn't find anyone, but the Winds of War is slowing Marta down. There's another Cataclysm, and Marta is just gonna Dunked. get dismantled by the Jarvan. Kuro's still looking for more, but this one pick, we'll see what a Freak of Freaks can turn it into. A Baron could be an opportunity. Smurb's gonna take a drink, and Marin just looks like he hasn't a care in the world. The Freak of Freaks, well, they're going to see what they can do. Just four versus five. There's a good barrel. As Marin's actually just going to dive straight in. Everyone underneath the turret. Good kick from Score gets a lot of knockups. As Marin is still not dead. There's a heroic entrance just to keep him alive. Another knockup onto Smab, and he's going to get taken down most likely. There he goes. Kramer grabs that kill, and still the Freak of Freaks have lost no one. Marin, all the shields. The Inspire as well from Tucson. He's absolutely fine. Perfect game, still alive. 10,000 gold lead plus for Afrika Freaks. And definitely needed. It was a bit messy there from Afrika, but the result was most of the inhibitor turret going down and a couple of picks as well. Once again, looking to KT to make something happen. That hasn't really worked for them so far this game. And Afrika have had so many control wards in the red side jungle. Score started all of this, looking for a pick on the Jarvan. Speaking of picks... Yep, massive teleport's going to come in, but Score is going to take one of the longest dark passages to safety. Pont has himself the package, so is able to stand a little bit further up this lane and still feel safe. And Pont's really strong. He is that's pretty strapped. He has the Infinity Edge on top of the Trinity Force and Phantom Dancer, but it's not going to help him actually deal with Kuro or... Marin, he's not going to get access to any of the people that will die very quickly. So for now, really are looking for Afrika to make a pretty significant mistake. A first pick, and then perhaps everything comes together for KT Rolster. But they stay as five, and they do have other grouping tools and a lot of gap closes to get them out of hairy situations. It's hard to see how KT will execute now that their dream of grouping with a Trinity Force Corky at 12 minutes is yeah. 22 minutes out of day. Yeah. Like you said, does have a lot of those items. Bottom lane is pushing out for KT, and thankfully they were able to hold on to their inhibitor. Freak of Freak's not wanting to go too aggressive this particular stage. Now just grabbing soul vision of this Baron Pit. Thankfully for KT, they have a lot of pretty slippery team members. Marta going to throw down a Dark Passage to help score clear out that Baron Pit. Third Cloud Drake of the game goes to Afrika. They're going to be moving very fast whilst out of combat. And that Elder Drake is going to be very, very powerful when it does spawn in the next six minutes. A triple Cloud, you know, usually it'd be something that would elicit Bronx cheers from fans. Triple Ocean also is malign, but people have targeted engaged, like for example, a Jarvan. Having all this crazy amount of movement speed, if this allows him to open a fight with the Cataclysm, then EQ afterwards, so get the maximum damage <coughs> output. Yeah. Usually, if you have to EQ into Cataclysm, you're missing out on the damage from the actual flag and drag. Having extra movement speed or even being able to be in a better position to hit an advanced Cocoon is actually pretty relevant. So, given that KT have 80 carries, you can stack movement speed, zeal items, and in general are pretty slippery, could actually be pretty consequential here as everyone's got Nikes on the side of Afrika. We certainly do. I love it. Kuro has built up the Gargoyle Stone Plate. Feels hyper relevant on a Galio. I have an insane amount of health in combat. Oh, yes. Not a massive amount of damage, but look, he's not boasting a massive amount of damage anyway. He's going to be helping Tucson and Spirit do a little bit more with that uh, Abyssal Scepter that he has built for himself and the rest of his team. Nothing wrong with being an Aura tank, Atlas. Yeah, absolutely not. I was a Season 2 jungler, I remember. <laughs> I've never seen you play a tank jungler in your life, Bob Smithy. I played Mundo. But was it as a tank? Or did you build Leandri's Torment first item? You know what I built first item? You remember. I started Doran Shield, baby. <laughs> Actually, I do remember that. <laughs> I could Topical that currently. Yeah, I like it. It was a very different Doran Shield, though. Freaka Freaka. Already broke the base earlier, so they're looking for an inhibitor. Probably will need some sort of picks. We're watching Kramer. So far, the Ash Arrows have been super on point. Oh, yeah. 
I like this rotation as well. Maram prepares a minion wave, moves it towards the bottom lane. They get a few hits on this turret. Kramer very far forward. Throws out the ultimate, does daft as Kuro. That gargoyle stone plate is making sure that his health bar does not change. And they just take Found down the turret. Him. Score is going to get exploded. No dark passage for you. You're going to go straight back to the death chamber. And this could spell inhibitors for the Afrika Freaks. The first one falls on the bottom side of the map. The mid lane next to go. The hook doesn't find the mark on the side of Deft. And this is looking all too easy. Perfect game still in the sights of Afrika Freaks. Insane stuff from Afrika. And kind of the most worrying thing from KT is that it really does feel like they waved the white flag quite a long time ago. If you think about the big mistakes they made, score, getting spotted when he ganked bot lane, they're getting collapsed upon, sure. But apart from that, it's just been really one-way traffic from Afrika. And KT have just tried to lose the minimum, lose the minimum when you're behind. That can certainly be smart. But at some point, if you lose the minimum eight times, it's 38 minutes in. You have nothing to your name. And the Baron buff is on Afrika's. Yeah. There's something to be said for, you know, why would you want to lose slowly when it's almost an inevitability, you know? Like, it's never the right thing to do to concede, 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 because sometimes you need to take proactive risks. It's conceding to a point, right? There are games where losing your mid lane inhibitor won't lose you the game. There are games where losing ward oh, control yes. won't lose you the game. We saw G2 make it through the group stage, losing the minimum with late game comps. KT don't really have that comp, so they couldn't are in the same position where they could surrender to a certain uh, character or champion hitting six items. And also, they were mostly on a timing-based comp. They missed their timings, and the result they took was not to try and chance something, to try and make something happen. Instead, it was just to keep losing the minimum. Well, Smeb, not going to be able to take that particular Dark Passage, but makes it back to his last remaining inhibitor turret. Marin is now truly the dunk master. He is Michael Jarvin in this game. Oh, yes. He's got the Guardian Angel. It is completed. That's even more AD and unkillability. Apologize for how that word sounds. I mean, the way these fights work is that, honestly, you go for that cataclysmic entrance, and then they don't die in the front line ever. Well, speaking of a cataclysmic entrance, it could be one it's for really Smeb. really deep he's, teleport. Yeah, super deep into the Raptor Pit. Marin's at half health. This could be an opportunity. But a Freak of Freak still looking for this death. Has to flash, but does so quite nicely. Smeb in the back line trying to get the disruption down. Kramer finds the kill on to score already. And Marin's just, Smeb's just going to get destroyed. Marin finds Pawn, finds Deft. And this is a Jarvan on a mission. Deft is dead. It's a double kill. And remember, he's got that GA. He doesn't care about the perfect game being on the line. And with a gigantic gold lead, the Freak of Freaks are going to take down the Nexus. And the perfect game has been achieved. Lucky 13 for a Freak of Freaks. 13 and 0. No objectives, no kills, no structures at all for Katie Rolster, and we wondered if we could just call the 2-0 loss to Longju as a mulligan, as a sidestep. They needed to redefine their season today to Katie Rolster, and no one's looking very much higher than the floor, because Katie, if that's going to be their season, it's not going to be one to remember. Well, they're certainly going to have to change a lot of things, Papa Smithy. This is still a best of three series. We've seen KT bounce back before. But it hasn't been, like, this roster just hasn't felt like the one to defy odds in that regard. It feels like they need to be good when they start off on the day because emotions can run high with these players. Something's really going to have to give before game number two. They're going to have to find some way to re-channel this energy because this just... Game one was not in their favor. I mean, there's five winners on this team. How many of these players have been part of the losing side of a perfect game? I don't have that stat in front of me, but I bet it's not many. Yeah. We've seen this same KT Rolster inflict the only perfect game of spring, beating Samsung Galaxy right at the start of the season. Now they're going to take what might be the only perfect game of the season as a loss, just to open up the summer. See, it's only the second match, and you can see the coaches trying to make sense of what was. Honestly, a team rolling over and dying. Yep. And well, they haven't ever beaten a Freak of Freaks without dropping a map. But can they turn this all around moving into game number two? Because they're going to have to get back to back victories after what was a pretty desperate loss on the side of KT. 
It was a real struggle, but we are going to go to a short break. When we get back, we'll see whether KT can bounce back against the Freak of Freaks.